Foundation guide to 20 meters, where we'll explore the 14 megahertz amateur band. Hotel Lima 5 kilowatt Yankee. I'll discuss equipment, activity, antennas and operating on this interesting amateur band. 20 metres is ideally suited to those who like to work DX, more than about a thousand kilometres. It can support worldwide propagation throughout the sunspot cycle and even at night, particularly in the high solar count years. With 14 megahertz, the antennas are smaller than on 80 and 40 metres, meaning that if you've got an average suburban backyard, you may be able to fit in a beam, providing directivity and gain. So what's 14 megahertz like? First of all, the propagation. It's not the band that you'd choose if you want to work short distances, like three or 400 kilometres. Most often, the signal skips over those sorts of distances and you'll hear stations within that range very weakly, if at all. Plus, its ground wave coverage isn't all that great, maybe only 20 or 30 kilometres. If you want longer distance ground wave coverage, then you need to go to lower frequency amateur bands, or maybe even switch to VHF. During the day, 14 megahertz is open for a lot of single hop contacts, maybe two or 3,000 kilometres away. Here in Australia, for Melbourne, there's not much population in those distances. So, if you tune on 20 metres in the middle of the day, often you won't hear many signals. In the southwestern part of VK2. Signals on 20 metres can have a hollow sound, often because of multipathing, where the signal is taking different paths and arriving at different times at the receiver. The best times to work DX on 20 metres are generally within two hours of sunset and sunrise. Here just before sunset, Europe is coming in well to Australia, and around sunrise, or a bit after, America comes on. Off the long path. You'll often hear reference to what's called long path and short path. Short path is the shortest distance, measured as a great circle, between the origin and the destination. Then there's long path, where it's a longer distance, going the other way around the world. You can't really tell whether you're working long or short path, unless you've got a rotatable beam and know where the signal's coming from. Unlike 80 and 40 metres, 20 metres is much less conversational. It's more hurried and more of your contacts are like 5973 good DX, then on to the next one. It's not really as much the rag as band. And besides, you'll often get propagation to countries that don't always speak your language. In relation to activity, there's a couple of key frequencies you need to be aware of. The CW end is about in the bottom 70 kilohertz. There's PSK from about 14070. Then there's the international beacons around 14.1. If you tune your receiver to those and keep it on that frequency, you'll hear beacons from around the world. The international beacon project beacons start at 100 watts and go down in 10 dB steps down to 100 milliwatts. Therefore, they're a useful way of determining when the band is open to where. Above 14.1 is SSB, but only in some parts of the world. The Americans don't start their SSB segment until 14.150. The busiest DX segment is between about 14.15 and 14.3. That's on SSB. Though note, there's slow scan television on 14.23, which you should avoid unless you are transmitting SSTV. If you get the right software and connect your rig up to a computer, you'll be able to see the pictures as well. 20 meters is busy on both CW and SSB. 
Also digital modes like PSK31, where frequencies around 14070 are popular. If there's an SSB contest, the band will be wall to wall signals, often some that you can't hear because they're clobbered over by others. If there's a big contest on, then you can probably give away 20 metres, unless you're participating. Or you can switch mode. For instance, most SSB contests will have their CW section on in a different weekend, and vice versa. So, if you have capabilities for various modes, you can avoid the contest bedlam. We're Victor Kellogg 3, Yankee Ecuador. Got your 5 9 Massachusetts. Another possibility is going to alternative bands like 17 and 30 metres, which are not contest bands. In relation to equipment on 20 metres, just about every HF transceiver has 20 metre capability. There's also some homebrew kits, not as many as on 40 and 80, but there are still some available, particularly multi-band QRP rigs. 20 and 40 metres is a good day-night band combination, so it's worth taking 20 metres if you're going portable somewhere. Compared with 40 and 80 metres, 20 metres is slightly harder to build equipment for, mainly because transistor gain is less, and in a direct conversion receiver, you'll need a bit more gain to be able to hear signals well. You can buy fundamental crystals on 20 metres, and in a good VXO arrangement, particularly with two crystals in parallel, you can cover a goodly slice of the CW end of the band. That's really important because on 20 metres you're very much into hunting and searching rather than expecting someone to find your QRP signal. It does happen but not very much. Antennas for 20 metres. The standard half wave dipole is fine but the higher it is the lower the angle of radiation so if you want to work DX a high dipole is a good choice. If you can't put up a high dipole, then maybe a vertical is right for you. Though do pay attention to the ground and the ground radial system. Otherwise, it might not be so efficient. Alternatively, I've had good luck with a delta loop. You can feed it for either horizontal or vertical polarization. If you want horizontal polarization, you feed it in the middle of the bottom element. If you want vertical, you feed it just up from a corner. So there's a quarter wavelength from the apex down to the feed point and a little bit of wire going down from the feed point to the bottom corner. If you've got salt water nearby, it's a good idea to be over it because that will help your DX success. 20 meters is also the lowest frequency band where you can readily work DX stations, pedestrian mobile. And by DX, I'm talking about 10,000 kilometers or more, i.e. to the other side of the world. You can either go with a magnetic loop or a full-size quarter wave. That's five metres tall, i.e. the length of a small fishing rod. If you have that on your backpack, you should be able to work DX, especially if you've also got salt water underneath and you've got a ground connection to it. What about QRP and 20 metres? It can be a difficult band and is harder, in my opinion, than 40 metres. Crystal control is definitely not on, and you should preferably have five watts, or as close to it as you can. Sure, you can get long distance QRP DX with lower power, but there's a lot of times where you're calling stations and they won't hear you. Plus, there's the competition from stations on adjacent frequencies or others on that frequency trying to work the same station that you are. Still, if you want to get DXCC, i.e. working 100 countries, then 20 meters is the easiest band to do it, with a QRP or running full power. Over to uh, Peter again, uh, see if he could hear you, Mark. Um, Victor Kilo 3, Yankee Echo in the group, VK2 BSY portable, over. Yeah, VK3, Yankee Echo portable, yeah, five watts. <laughs> well, well you're, you're five by six with me, and Mark's five by five with you. I don't know, uh, I think Mark can hear you as well, so, uh, uh, but you, you weren't, weren't uh, quite, you know, weren't extremely strong, shall we say, but for, on five watts, that's pretty damn good. I'll put it back to Mark, and uh, yes, he can hear you, Mark, so it's whether, how, how good you can hear him. Two Echo Zero Victor Oscar Victor Stroke Mobile with Victor Kilo 3 Yankee Echo Stroke Portable QRP, and possibly Mike Zero Delta Alpha Delta as well from Victor Kilo 
two Bravo Sierra Yankee portable, over. Just to sum up, if you want a long rag chew with local people with you in your own state or country, maybe 20 metres isn't for you. But if you want to work DX, even with quite modest antennas, and don't mind the crowding, then 20 metres could be your ideal band. As we go down lower into the sunspot cycle, 20 metres may be the only DX band that you'll regularly get long distance contacts. There's only a few years left until we're right at the bottom. So if you are interested in getting onto 20 meters, I would hurry up straight away and make the most of current solar conditions. If you want to make the most of low power amateur radio, you need minimum QRP. It's a Kindle eBook available for under $5 US. For more information, search minimum QRP in Amazon. <laughs> 